We're back out here once again, and today we're talking about baits and presentations that are sure to work for you all summer long. And we're not just going to talk about where they work, but why they work so well. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Got him. Oh, he choked that frog. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And everybody's got their favorite summer lures. You see a lot of videos about the best summer baits and presentations. And today, we're going to talk about a few of mine. These are what are going to be tied on for most of the time all through the summer and beyond. They work so well for me. But I don't just want to talk about what baits I'm using. I want to talk about why they're so effective and in the places that I'm using them. I want to discuss what exactly we mean when we talk about fishing patterns. We know what we're talking about when we say fishing conditions. You know, that's what conditions are the water? What condition is the weather? What condition is the area that you're fishing in? But we don't ever really get an explanation when somebody says patterns. And today we're going to talk about patterns. And what patterns means basically is a seasonal thing. How are those bass set up? What are they relating to? What are they doing right now? And how you can use that information and combine it with conditions at hand to pick and select the best bait for the job. So we're going to go out on the water and I'm going to show you some of the places and why they are so productive for me. And we're going to start out with, again, the baby Carolina, the mojo rig. You know, a lot of people love this thing. It's a pared down Carolina and it works so good. I started out with it again today. I used the same setup that I had in the last video and it was equally productive for me. As a matter of fact, it wasn't long, and I got another nice fish. But this bite, this was a really special bite, as I watched that bass come up out of that silt, out of that sediment in the bottom, and hit that lure right at the boat and take it back down. First thing I've got tied on is the Baby Carolina, or the Mojo Rig. One presentation many different names we're going to start out with that about a three foot leader He came right up there and got it. Whoa, he came right up there and chased it in. Came right up there and chased it in. This big bass right here came right in there and chased it in. I know I got that on video. I know I got that on video. That was amazing. Uh-uh. 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 That's what you call special. That's what you call special. A giant two-pound bass. Well, not giant. But a nice two-pound bass. You go right there. Beautiful, does it again, absolutely, north of two pounds, whoops, not quite two and a quarter, Mojo Rig, Baby Carolina, comes through again, thank you very much, mister, alright, let's go get another one, so a great fish, two, two and a quarter pound, a great way to start the day, that fish was right exactly where I expected it to be, just a little bit off of the bank, in some clumps of hydrilla. We had some overcast skies, so that means that those bass were going to be pulled out more in the middle of that channel a little bit, and they were going to be roaming around. That bass was in a very predictable location. That's what we call a pattern. 
I knew where that bass was, I knew why that bass was there, and I knew what bait to throw, and that's why I caught that fish. But that's not the only thing. Another bait that I'm going to have tied on all year long is this guy right here. Let me get the wrap off of it. And that is a good old jerk bait. This is just an H2 Express jerk bait. This is what I had tied on today. I've, you know, as always, I've got it tied on a spinner. You know, a lot of guys like to fish them on bait cast. I prefer to do it on a spinner. But this was more toward the middle of that channel. In the same area, I was fishing that baby Carolina. I wasn't, but maybe 50 yards away, out in the middle of the channel, a little bit deeper water, and I knew this was going to be effective because there's a submerged creek channel that runs through there, and those fish like to set up in that area. So I can use this over the top of that submerged creek channel and entice those bass for some really good strikes. And I was not disappointed. It didn't take long, and I had a fish hit this so hard, it almost pulled the rod out of my hand. A great fight, for sure. I wish the bass was a little bit bigger, but isn't it always how the little fish, the smaller fish, always seem like they hit like a ton of bricks, and the bigger fish, it's almost always like a wet sack of potatoes, you know, that all of a sudden you've got on there. Either way, it was a lot of fun. Again, that fish was exactly where it needed to be but I wanna show you some detailed stuff about where those bass are setting up on my fishery. And hopefully it will help you find places on your fishery where those bass are setting up for their summer pattern. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look at some very grassy areas where I'm fishing frogs and I'm fishing Waco rigs and Texas rigs and swim jigs because there's a lot of that on my fishery so it necessitates me understanding these waters and being able to break them down. So let's go ahead and head out on the water and I'll show you just exactly where I'm fishing and why those bass are setting up there. All right now when it comes to summer jerkbait bass fishing there are a couple of retrieves that I like to use cast it out there and a jerkbait casts like a missile. You just flick it and it goes 200 feet. Wind it down the depth. I let it sit there for a few seconds and then on slack line I'm going to be giving it taps. One, two, let it sit. Reel the slack. I one, two, three, you know, let it sit. I try to mix it up. You know? No real cadence. No real rhyme or reason to it. Just how you think a fish would move under the water. And you want to do it with a good bit of slack in your line. Now when I'm popping it, I'm not doing it very extreme. I'm just popping that slack out. As soon as I feel that tension, I let off. And you can, I don't know how well you can see, but that's how the jerk bait moves underwater. And that's the first way I'm doing it. The second way, is one that I don't see a lot of guys doing, and that's basically I'm working it really fast. Where I'm just working it like I'm working a spook. And again, I still have slack in my line. I'm just reeling as I go. Basically like I'm doing a Zara spook, or a walking bait. And what that causes is, that causes that jerk bait to kind of walk side to side, you know, like a spook, like a walking bait, but under the water. And I get some really huge blow-ups doing that. You know, and like I said, people fish jerk baits in the winter time, and that's when they fish them solely in the winter time. I'm here to tell you I fish them all year long, and I get monster blow-ups all year long. So I can mix it up. I can kind of work it fast and then pause it, give it a couple of jerks, and then mix it up. Kind of go fast and then pause it, you know, and then start working it kind of slow. You want to seem as natural as you possibly can. That's the idea. You want to seem just as natural as you possibly can. And another thing you can do with it, and this is something that a lot of the older guys do, a lot of the older anglers do, is they just crank it nice and slow. Just like it's a qu uh, square bill or a crankbait. And you can do that too. 
is it actually rattles and wiggles in the water whenever you crank it nice and slow or you can crank it fast you can actually you know it's got a pretty tight wobble in the water and then lastly we can take and we can kind of mix those retrieves up wind it down start cranking it fast let it sit crank it a little bit crank it a little bit fast again and then let it sit kind of settle out and then kind of work it slow you can put as long a pauses in there as you want to but those are some of the things that I like to do those are some of my favorite retrieves those are the types of things that get me bites when I'm using a good old jerk bait this right here is one of my favorite little sneaky spots that I like you can see that there's a lot of emergent hydrilla there's a whole bunch of emergent hydrilla it's great for frogging it's great for warming you know Texas rigs it's great for swim jigs but that little submerged area that runs right along the bank you see that that little spot where there's no hydrilla that is a submerged creek channel it's only maybe five feet wide but it gets considerably deeper in there we've got these trees these oak trees that come up over and we've got all this flooded brush that hangs up over it so right in here is jig and pitching heaven out here is frogging heaven it's just a great place to catch fish and they're stacked up in this area pretty much all year long these are the types of places that i'm looking for consistently throughout the summer this is another location that really works well with the summer pattern. You can see that it's a hydrilla flat. We've got a long stretch of hydrilla here. I'm also not very far from the bank. Those bass are using this mat the same way they would use that flooded brush. This offers everything that they need. It's an ambush point. It is a shade source and all that hydrilla is providing high amounts of oxygenation for the water so the bass don't really have any reason to roam out down to the southern part of the lake where it's much deeper when they can find everything that they need here which is why during the summertime this is a place that those bass will like to congregate just like florida alabama texas every lake in the gulf south you're going to find these sorts of situations if you have something like this on your lake if you have thick matted vegetation it doesn't have to be hydrilla it could be milfoil it could be eelgrass it could be whatever you're going to find the same sorts of results you're going to find the same sorts of situations during the summer months and those bass are set up in summer patterns that's what we're talking about remember we're not talking about spots this is a location but the location fits in with the pattern so we're going to use this pattern the bass are here and we're going to pair it up with the proper bait given the conditions so Let's give it a try and see what kind of bass we can pull out of this thing. Okay, so I showed you all about those vegetation mats, all about the hydrilla, that creek arm that runs right to the bank. You can see why that's such a juicy spot for a whole host of reasons. I can fish a frog over there. I can fish prop baits. I can flip a jig. I can do a Texas rig. I can do a wacky rig all in that one area. And because of the fresh water going through and how much oxygenation is going on in that water from all the vegetation, those bass are always in that area and they're always well oxygenated. And better yet, there's always prey species in that area. So the bass have a reason to be there other than just what's around it with the creek channel and the brush and whatnot. Obviously, I'm going to be starting with something like a good old popping frog. This is a spro popping frog. This is what I was working in that area. This is what I started out with, and I really never found the reason to change it. It did so well for me. I was out there maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, and I hooked into three or four really nice bass. And unlike that six cents Vega bass, this one doesn't miss. I got great hookups on it. So this is my replacement for that Vega bass. For those of you who missed those videos, check them out. You might get a good laugh at how many fish I missed with that Vega uh, frog. But either way, you get an idea of what I'm talking about when I say patterns. We already know what conditions are. That's the easy part. But what do we mean when we say patterns? And when we say fish patterns, 
not spots. Well, patterns are how those bass are set up. What is their overall behavior? What is their overall mood? What are they doing right now? And it's a seasonal thing. As we move deeper into summer, it'll change. As we move into fall, they'll go through the fall turnover and they'll be in a fall pattern and then the winter pattern and then the pre-spawn and the spawn. And we fish those different situations accordingly. In the summertime, we're going to have two basic populations, those who are shallow and those who are deep. Now, the bass that are shallow, they're shallow because they don't need to go deep. They're getting what they want right there in that shallow water. And those bass that are going deep, they might be suspending, but that doesn't mean that they won't take a bait. You can catch them on a whole bunch of things. One of my favorite ways to do it is with a spoon. Let that spoon flutter down and those bass will annihilate it. You may have a different approach. You may like a drop shot or something like that. A mid-level crankbait, a square bill. Those are all great presentations for whenever we're fishing out deep. They can work so well. It doesn't even have to be that deep. It can be 10, 12 feet of water. Deep is relative to your fishery. The big lake is not that deep. But hopefully this expanded your understanding of what we talk about when we say fish patterns. And hopefully you see where my logic is, where my headspace is when I'm talking about this is why I'm fishing these baits here. And hopefully you'll be able to do the same things on your fishery and start pairing those baits up together and having a lot more success doing it. So there you have it. What I mean when I say fish patterns how those bass are set up. And you can see the summer lures and presentations I'm using to pair up with that. And how I fish a jerkbait differently in the summertime as opposed to the rest of the year. I fish it much faster and I actually use it to cover water. And it's been so effective for me. So give it a try. I think you'll really like the results. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.